So I recently put out a poll asking all of you which game are you playing first when the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection drops. An overwhelming majority of you voted that you're going to be playing in the chronological story order. During this experiment, I also noticed that a lot of you that are commenting on the poll have never played a Battle Network game before, or maybe you haven't played all of them and you're just kind of getting back into it with the Legacy Collection. So, with the Legacy Collection on the horizon, coming out on April 14th, I wanted to give some of my own advice on which of the Battle Network games included in the collection are worth playing. Obviously, this video is going to be focused towards newcomers to the series. Welcome, by the way. But maybe if you veterans do decide to watch anyway, you can vouch for some of my opinions here. So, which of the Battle Network games are worth playing? And is going chronological story order really the play? Let's talk about that. Alright, let's actually begin by addressing the question, is going chronological story order the play here? And if you truly do care about experiencing the storyline of the series in order, then yeah, playing Battle Networks 1 through 6 in order is the play. However, there is an asterisk or two there. And the first big hurdle is really the first game, Mega Man Battle Network 1. Of all the Mega Man series that exist today, BN1 is a prime example of a game that suffers from first game syndrome. There's some jakiness to the mechanics. For example, in battles, every hit causes flinching, and that includes your Buster, which is largely the reason why Buster only runs are so easy in this game. After every battle, Mega Man recovers all of his HP, which you would think that's a good thing, However, they balance that by making all the viruses hit like a freaking truck, especially in the later areas of the game. Yeah, that's not how it works in the later games, because from BN2 and on, Mega Man does retain all of his damage between battles, but they introduce subchips to help recover HP. You can't run from battles without using an escape battle chip. The internet maps are super confusing and labyrinthian because everything looks the same. There's also some obtuse moments in the game where they're not very clear on what exactly you're supposed to do to progress the story. It happens from time to time in the other Bound Network games too, but BN1 is especially bad about it. The list just kind of goes on and on. And the thing is, I've seen people online try to get into the Bound Network series by starting with the first game, which makes sense, but Bound Network 1, like I said, is not the best. Actually, it's my least favorite of the series. So for some people, when they get into BN1 and they experience all of that jankiness, it makes them want to give up on trying the rest of the series because their first impression was very lukewarm. And to me, that's a big shame. So here is my advice to all of you. If you want to play in story order, I think that's a great idea. But if you get into Bound Network 1 and you feel that it's just too janky for you to handle, it is perfectly okay to skip BN1 and go straight into BN2. Maybe come back to BN1 later, but it's not a priority story-wise. Yeah, I guess you miss out on the origins of a couple reoccurring characters like Mr. Match and Higsby. But other than that, the only major story element you would be missing out on is a reveal that happens right at the very end. And honestly, it's gonna keep getting brought up in the later games anyway, so... At the end of the day, BN1 doesn't have any major pieces of missable lore. So like I said, if you want to skip BN1, that is A-okay. As because of all of the things I mentioned, I don't believe BN1 is the best representation of what the rest of the series has to offer. Which does kind of make it frustrating when people just play BN1 and then judge the rest of the series based on that. No. Starting from BN2 and on, they fixed pretty much all of the issues that BN1 had and expanded on it even more from there, like adding the style changes and then BN3 adding a Navi customizer. Those two games are the ones that help solidify the Bound Network formula that we have today. So if you must go in story order, maybe consider starting with those. But if you absolutely must play BN1, 
The Legacy Collection may not be the best way to experience it because as we've seen so far, it's based on the Game Boy Advance version, the original vanilla version. If you have the means to do so, I would actually recommend trying out Rockman EXE Operate Shooting Star. Or as the fan English patch calls it, Mega Man Battle Network Operate Star Force. This is essentially a port of Battle Network 1 to the DS that adds an extra Star Force scenario late in the game. And once you clear that, it unlocks Star Force Mega Man as a playable character. Hence the name of the game. Otherwise, this is the definitive version of BN1 because it does add some quality of life changes, such as the ability to run from battles. Chips in the custom screen that you can't select actually dim so you know what you're doing. And when using dimming chips like Navi chips, they actually deal out the damage during the animation as it does in the later games, as opposed to after the animation like in the vanilla game. Oh yeah, and there is a map too if you get lost in the internet. OSS also adds a couple new battle chips and brings some balance changes to the existing pool of chips. As well as making adjustments to things like a Lechman scenario, making its puzzles way more manageable. These are definitely the quality of life improvements that B and 1 needs, and we would love to see it in Legacy Collection. However, evidence so far from all the footage suggests that it's just the vanilla Game Boy Advance version, and we may never get those quality of life improvements unfortunately. So in that case, I recommend Operate Shooting Star. The other game that you may want to be wary of when playing through the main 6 is Bout Network 4. Honestly, I don't dislike this game like some people do. After all, it did introduce some core mechanics that follows in the later titles like Full Synchro, The Emotion Window, and Double Soul. However, kind of like Bad Network 1, it's a bit janky at times, and the story itself is basically a giant tournament arc played over three times, with the main plots kind of sandwiched in occasionally, but it doesn't come up nearly as much. The scenarios and minigames aren't the best. Many of the tournament scenarios boil down to fetch quests, often requiring you to run to the end of an area, or said horrible minigames. The game can be a completionist nightmare with the fact that you have to do multiple playthroughs with the viruses upgrading every time just to get all of the double souls and all the chips, let alone experiencing everything that the game has to offer. Did I mention that BN4 has some of the most annoying virus and boss encounters in the series? Oh my goodness man. And if Legacy Collection doesn't fix it, there's a lot of funny typos. I could also mention the glitches that can happen if you emulate the game, but I'm pretty sure those are going to be fixed for Legacy Collection. I would be shocked if they weren't. In conclusion anyway, I think BN4 can be pretty fun from a gameplay perspective at times, especially in battles. And that's why I prefer over being one. However, there is no denying that the game has a lot of problems that would understandably turn someone off from playing it. And like I mentioned, the storyline is basically a giant tournament arc and the main plot overall mainly introduces the dark chips and the main villain that reappears in being five anyways. So similar to BN1, you're not missing much story-wise if you do decide to skip BN4. Since in a lot of ways you could look at it as just a filler arc. So yep, if you want to play the good games in the series in order, start to operate Shooting Star if you want to, otherwise go BN2, BN3, BN5, and BN6. And I'll leave it up to you if you want to try 4 or even the vanilla version of BN1. But you know, there are still some other considerations to make when choosing which Bound Network game you start with. Like, what if you don't want to go in chronological order? What if you said, Shadowrock, just tell me which game has the best storyline in the entire series. Just hit me with the good stuff right off the bat. Well, in my personal opinion, the best storyline has to go to BN3. There's a lot of good character moments in there, even some spicy expansions to the backstories of existing characters in the series, and there are some moments that genuinely will tug at your heartstrings. Seriously, if the ending doesn't at least make you tear up, there's something wrong with you. After that, I would say it's kind of up to you what you would rather play out of BN2, 5, and 6. 
the N2 story can get really dark really fast. Which is the main reason why it stands out to me personally. Not to mention, it has some adult lines in there that make you wonder how this game even got an E for Everyone rating originally. I'm begging you Capcom, please do not touch any of this dialogue in the Legacy Collection. BN2 is perfect the way it is. God bless gospel. Meanwhile with Battle Network 5, I mostly enjoyed the camaraderie between Mega Man and his fellow team members, which is an entirely different cast depending on the version that you choose. So it can make for a totally different experience in some ways if you choose Team Proto Man or Team Colonel. The storyline surrounding the Dark Chips and Nebula is much more substantial than BN4, and you even get to learn more about the past of the Hikari family. Which is one reason why I say BN1's plot is not necessary. Meanwhile, BN6 is the last entry in the series and they do a pretty bang up job of ending things off with a proper conclusion. One of the few Mega Man series to actually get a conclusion in fact. This game basically has it all. New and old friends, new and old foes, movie moments, betrayal, heroics, plot twists. Yeah, it's not too bad. Though I will say you may get more out of BN6 if you played BN5 Team Colonel first. On the flip side of the coin, what if you asked me, which of the games has the best gameplay? I don't care about the story, my man. I just want to get right into the action and enjoy some good net battles. Well, my friend, do I have a strong recommendation for you. It took six games, but BN6 is the game where Capcom finally struck a great balance between single player and PvP. There is an awesome selection of battle chips available, with a wide variety of strategies and combos to make use of. The crosses and beast out transformations available to Mega Man allow for a wide variety of techs and abilities to be used. I also like that crosses aren't limited to 3 turns unlike the double souls so that you can use them for as long as you want. Although you still have to worry about being decrossed if you get hit by your elemental weakness. Yeah, I like crosses a lot better than double soul. But as powerful as Mega Man can be, the player versus player net battles is as balanced as it has been in series history. Yeah, there might be a couple chips here and there that may be broken, <clears throat> double beast, but nothing that's nearly as bad as previous games can be, and nothing that a ban list can't fix. Honestly, the best evidence of how good BN6 really is is just watching the competitive community that has formed around the game. The N1GP community has been hosting tons and tons of BN6 tournaments throughout the years, and that's just proof in the pudding how well Capcom nailed the gameplay balance in BN6. As even in the highest levels of play, folders can still end up being quite varied. Maybe in Legacy Collection the folders will have to be more boring to accommodate for the time limit we have at the custom screen now, but that's a topic for another day. All that just to say, yeah, BN6 is the way to go if you just want to play a really good video game, and especially if you want to get into the online competitive aspect of the game. As for other games, in my opinion, BN5 is also rather balanced, at least as far as the chip selection is concerned. The double soul distribution is still quite one-sided between the two versions, and the same goes for BN4. Oh, and of course, you can't talk about BN5 without mentioning the Liberation Missions, which adds a strategy RPG element to the usual Battle Network gameplay. As you command your team of navvies and manage their abilities to clear out dark panels, mini bosses, and traps as you make your way to the Dark Lord. Some people did not like the Liberation Missions. Me personally? It did take some getting used to, but once I got it down, I really like the strategic element that it adds to the Battle Network series, and the fact that it makes you use your brain way more compared to anything else in the series, with the exception perhaps of PvP net battles. But whether you like Liberation Missions is up to you, and that's why I say after 6 it's pretty much up to your preference. BN2 is pretty solid, but it relies on program advances too much because the regular chips just don't put out enough damage. BN3 is pretty great, although it sucks that you can only have one style change at a time, unlike BN2 that lets you have two. 
Navigation and story progression relies too heavily on having certain Navi customizer programs installed, and there is a fair amount of grinding involved to get everything that you want, although I guess that applies to every game in the series. Being 4 has a pretty cool combat system, but everything else surrounding that leaves something to be desired, and being 1 is being 1. And the last consideration that one could make when choosing a game is what version should you play? So the Legacy Collection has 10 games in total, and that's because of the fact that 3 through 6 has two versions each. So let's go down and talk about each one. BN3 has white and blue versions. The interesting thing about BN3 is that the Japanese equivalent of blue version came out after the base BN3 game. So in other words, white is the original, and blue is the definitive version for all intents and purposes. Really, the main differences come down to the fact that each game has their own exclusive Navi boss, one exclusive style for each, ground style for white, and shadow style for blue. Blue does add Mr. Famous with Punk as an additional boss to fight. Blue has a whole new selection of Giga Chips, including the very infamous Folder Back, which just resets your entire folder mid-battle. Yeah, pretty broken, I can see why it never came back. Shop selection is a bit different between the two, things like that. Overall, I would recommend going Blue version if you just want to play the quote-unquote best version of the game, but I guess you could play White if you really want ground style. Being 4 has Blue Moon and Red Sun. And I won't lie to you, Red Sun has the best Double Souls by far. Roll Soul is so broken that some competitive circles just outright ban it, and Search Soul is always really useful too. At the end of the day, it all boils down to your playstyle and which souls you like better. For example, if you really like Sword Chips, then maybe you should go Blue Moon for the Proto Soul. Because in Legacy Collection, we are having Free Tournament Mode fully available, you can always send over the opposite version navvies to your game and then experience all their scenarios all in one game, so you're not missing anything much there, technically. After that, it's all about which of the Giga Chip lineups you like better between the two versions. And this choice goes for all the games, by the way, that have different versions. Getting into BN5, once again, the main differences is the different double souls and navvies you have access to including their Navi chips and then the version exclusive Giga chips. People say that Team Colonel got the best souls overall, and it is true that Toadman's ability in Liberation Missions just absolutely breaks them in half. Team Colonel users also get treated to a bit of an extended ending, but Team Protoman users also get a little bit of extra dialogue that Team Colonel doesn't get. That's one way to get the player to play both versions, I guess. But actually, there's a little bit of a third version for BN5, and that's Double Team DS. That's on the DS, as the name implies. This one has both versions available to play, but there are some really cool things in Double Team DS, like the party battle system that lets you play with the different team navvies outside of Liberation missions. Lots of extra features, even adding a soul cross. And we even have the transport chips, which allow you to create your best definitive team out of both of the versions, which is really, really cool. So if you ever feel like not playing the Legacy Collection version, Double Team DS is a high recommendation for me. But yeah, overall, technically Team Colonel's the best version here, even though I was a Team Proto Man guy back in the day. Ultimately, go with the Double Soul lineup that fits your playstyle. And I'm going to regurgitate the same thing about BN6. A whole new set of crosses, and another new consideration, the different beast out forms that Mega Man gets. So Falzar version is a bit more utility focused. Things like Tengu Cross can get you over broken holes with its air shoes ability, and it can use its wind abilities to easily dispatch auras and barriers. Falzar Beast Mega Man also has air shoes to avoid holes, but Gregar Beast Mega Man does not. What the Gregar version lineup specializes in is raw damage output. And G Beast also gets super armor, that's always nice. So once again, it boils down to your playstyle and what you want to do with your strategy. Do you want to have that extra utility to deal with different situations, or do you want to focus on DPS? And of course, 
Which of the Giga Chip lineups do you like best? Lastly, I should mention that another difference with the different versions is, of course, the Navi chips available, but also the codes of the chips that you obtain can be different as well. Certain codes will be easier to get than others, but honestly, that shouldn't be a big consideration because that's what trading is for. You should definitely be focusing on your playstyle and what characters you like the best, because unless you want to get super competitive about it, it doesn't matter too much what version you pick at the end of the day. Personally, when I was playing through the Battle Network series when these games came out, I went White, Blue Moon, Team Proto Man, and Gregar in that order. Granted, at the time, I didn't know all the differences, I just went with like my favorite colors and what characters looked cool on the box. And that's totally fine too if you want to go in blind. As for White version, that's just what I ended up with for Christmas that year. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope this video has been at least somewhat helpful to you as to what kind of Bad Never games you should consider playing. And yeah, roll on April 14th. I'm really looking forward to the Legacy Collection, as with the exception of being one, this may be the definitive way to play the rest of the game, at least based on what we've seen so far. There's a lot of questions that remain unanswered at this point, like all the rest of the online adjustments, what's all the content that's eventually going to make it in or not, and lots of little details like that. But on the whole, it's going to be really exciting, and yeah, let's see how it goes. For those of you just getting into the Bound Network series of Legacy Collection, welcome to the EXE Club, and I hope you enjoy the ride. I would sure like to play all the games for the first time again. Battle Network is a really special series to my heart, and I hope it becomes one for you too. With that, thank you guys so much for watching, stay tuned to Shadowrock CX for all things Mega Man, and I'll catch you in the next one. Rock on!